When it comes to types of waves and vibrations, there are three types. You may need to only know the first two, but I'm going to talk about all three. Uh, something that's vibrating, this is called a transverse vibration. Things that have transverse vibrations, transverse means across the axis. Here's the rest axis, and this is vibrating across that axis. So that's a transverse vibration. We can have a longitudinal vibration. That's along the axis, because longitudinal along the axis. This is vibrating longitudinally and can create a longitudinal wave in the spring. And then I have something also called torsional. That's when I twist it and it rotates back and forth and back and forth. You don't see this one very often, but if you look in an old watch, the one that you would wind, uh, there's a torsional spring in there. So we do use that for something. So of the three types, let's talk first about transverse. Transverse waves are the ones you're probably most familiar with. They look like this. I've got something in the up top part of the wave is called a crest, and the bottom loop is called a trough. If you want more information on this wave, I've got a whole video where I just talk basically about the parts of this wave and how it works. But what you need to know for this is we've got a crest, a trough, we've got wavelength, that's how long the wave is, and I can measure that from the top of one crest to the top of a crest, or the bottom of a trough to the bottom of a trough. Transverse waves can travel this way. Imagine it like a water wave moving through the water. The types of waves that are familiar with that are transverse are water, light waves are transverse waves, and radio waves, the whole electromagnetic spectrum, is made up of transverse waves. So they're very common. Longitudinal waves, those are things where they vibrate longitudinally. And if you look, here's a drawing of one, you can see the lines that are drawn are spread apart here and close together here. These are called compressions, where they're close together and where the molecules are spread out, we call those rarefaction. This is a difficult wave to draw. It took me a lot longer to draw this one than this. Sound waves are longitudinal waves, but they have similar properties as transverse waves. I've got a crest, which is sort of analogous to a compression or a rarefaction, and I've got a trough, which is analogous to the other one. So I could actually draw a sound wave like this, and it'd be much more simple to analyze and view and see what's going on. I do have a wavelength for this. I can go from one compression to another compression and call that lambda. So because this is difficult to look at and difficult to describe, we frequently draw sound waves as transverse waves, but they are actually longitudinal waves. And the way they're created is, the compressions and the refractions, a speaker will vibrate to create sound. When it pushes the air, it compresses it. And when the speaker moves back, it pulls and spreads out the air. So it sends these vibrations uh, through the air. So this compression will travel through the air in this direction. Torsional, we don't really worry about very much. Um, if I took a spring and I twisted it and let it un untwist, that twist would work its way all the way to the other end. That's a torsional wave. The two that are most important, transverse and longitudinal, and just a reminder, sound waves is actually a longitudinal, but we draw it this way. So now let's go a little deeper in our study of waves uh, in the next video.